Board members, we're going to get started. It's a little bit after nine, and we have a another full agenda. I want to thank you for being here today. We've got, I, I believe, was Laura calling in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, there you go. I want to excuse Board Member Belknap. I want to welcome everyone here today uh, for our board meeting. Uh, on the safety side of things, our our exits are going the hall, and you can go north or south, whatever your choice is. Um, and restrooms and stuff are just right across the hall. And then um, here we have usually we we have a state trooper here around that's helping us out. But I didn't. You might be out. They might be outside. I want to thank them for being here today, um, and welcome everyone else. So we're going to get started here. Uh, board Member Mike uh, Haynes is going to do our Pledge of Allegiance. Would you like to lead us with that, please? Yeah, thank you. Uh, board Member Belknap asked to be excused. Um, also, FYI, our public information officer, Emily Wheeler, is she here? Yes. Standing in the back, uh, this is her last board meeting, and want to thank you for all your service and, and that, and wish you luck in your new endeavor. So thank you very much for your service. Um, board member message will be uh, from board member Jenny Earl, and uh, you're not doing it by yourself. You. Okay, I'll let you introduce. I'll turn that mic on. It's not. Do you see it? There we go. Okay. So I just want to take just a quick second to introduce our um, a guest that I've invited here today because I felt like she was more articulate on a particular topic than I would be. And specifically, um, uh, as we are redoing our, our standards for um, social studies and as... Um, it, as it is Veterans Day next week, I wanted to have something that honored um, and was patriotic for us, that honored our, those that serve in the military and was patriotic. So I'm going to introduce, this is Jenny um, Taylor, and I'm gonna leave it, I'm not gonna do a lot of introductions, so she has time. So. And I think most everyone in the state knows you. <laughs> well, and everyone but my children want to hear what I have to say, so. <laughs> Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for letting me be here. Thank you, Jenny Earl, for sharing your time with me. Uh, as she said, my name is Jenny Taylor, and I am the proud wife and widow of Major Brent Taylor, who is a member of our Utah National Guard, who was killed one year and four days ago in Afghanistan while on his fourth deployment. Um, I've had quite a year of opportunities to speak, to share my thoughts, my feelings, to really put my money where my mouth is and test my spirit of patriotism. But I will tell you that my journey as an American patriot did not begin one year and four days ago, nor did my journey as an American patriot begin one year or uh, 22 months ago when Brent deployed for this fourth and final time. It did not begin 16 years ago when he and I walked hand in hand into the headquarters building of the Utah National Guard when he enlisted as a proud American soldier. It didn't even begin when I, as a student at Brigham Young University, was studying the social sciences in secondary education. Long before my husband and I ever knew or loved each other, we both knew we loved the United States of America and the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness upon which this great nation has been founded. My husband and I have long loved this country, even more than life itself. 
And this past year has given both of us the chance to prove that that is more than just a trite phrase. It has been and continues to be the very theme of our lives. I will tell you where my journey as an American patriot began, because it's very relevant to all of you in this room and to the sacred work that you do in planning for the education of our school children. I was 10 years old, living in a suburb of Omaha, Nebraska, as a fifth grade student of John Walsh at Mockingbird Elementary. The desert storm conflict was taking place and we watched it unfolding in our classroom on a television that was much deeper than it was big in screen. I remember at that time there was a young man in my classroom named Abdullah whose family had fled Afghanistan so that he, as a 10 year old, could not be conscripted into the Soviet army to fight the wars that had been waging there for centuries. I remember Mr. Walsh talking to us about what it meant to pledge allegiance to the flag, what it meant to be part of the United States of America, what it meant to be patriotic without being nationalistic, what it meant to embrace all cultures, all people, all nations, while recognizing that we have something sacred and beautiful given to us as citizens of the United States of America. I remember that as a time when America rallied around our military. Gone was the era of Vietnam, when those who served our country were shunned, or those who were called upon to serve our country were finding every way they could to get out of it. Gone was the era of the Korean War that has long been forgotten, but I promise you it's not forgotten by those who served or for their family members. And long has passed the day of the greatest generation from World War II. In the early 1990s, America came together. You might remember the same song I remember, that Hollywood actors and pop stars came together to produce a movie. They put together called Voices That Care. Do you remember it? Perhaps if I sing a piece of it, you will. Stand tall, stand proud. Voices that care are crying out loud. I remember that as a 10-year-old girl, feeling something ignite inside of my soul, that I fell in love with my country. I fell in love with the freedoms that I had, and I wanted to share them with Abdullah, with the others around the world that had no idea just how good we have it. And now we live in a day and age where I worry that most of us here have no idea how good we have it. At the time of the Vietnam War, three quarters of the United States Congress members had a military background. Today, that number is 18%. An even more shocking number is one half of 1% of all Americans have ever worn the, army of the, the, the uniform of the military of the United States in 2018, one half of 1%. We have a great work to do as public educators. I say we because I am one of you. My passion is in public education. I have not been employed by a school district for the 15 years that I've been home raising my children, but I have both a bachelor's and a master's degree in education, and I have walked the halls of my children's students as a volunteer for more hours than I ever was paid for as a full-time employee. I love this country. I love the youth of America. I love that we celebrate the greatest generation from World, World War II. I love that we're finally remembering that we can't forget those who served in Korea. I love that we now celebrate when a soldier comes home, whether dead or alive, so different from that Vietnam era. But I will tell you, we cannot let the legacy of the greatest generation die with those who are now reaching their 90th and 100th years of life. It is on us as public educators, as parents, as members of our community, as citizens of this great state and this nation to stand up and rise up and raise up the greatest generation this country has ever known. Because truly they are the guardians of freedom. They will be the ones who will hold public office. They will be the ones who will represent us in the halls of Congress. They will be the ones who will be teaching the youth of tomorrow. And what will they teach them of this great country? What will they teach the me generation? Will they be able to learn a concept of we? Will they be able to feel those feelings of patriotism that were planted in my heart at such a young age? Sometimes we worry about being egotistical and too nationalistic, and so I worry that we become apologetic about our patriotism. My husband at the time of his death was also a student at the University of Utah pursuing his doctorate degree studying international relations with a focus on a concept called hegemony. Very few people know what that word means, but the hegemon of the world is seen as the leader. 
Now, in times of history, there has been a hegemon that might have had dictatorial and unethical purposes. They might have risen to power and taken power by conquering other nations. And a lot of people are quick to argue that the hegemon is just a bad thing overall. But if we can look to the sacred role our country can play as the hegemon of the world, not because we're better than the world, but because we've got something beautiful here. We've got something, an opportunity to share. We know that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness with liberty and justice for all does not say just for all members of the United States citizenship. My husband died on Afghanistan soil, but he died for the cause of freedom everywhere. And I am proud to stand and say, I am an American citizen. I hold that very sacred, with a very heavy responsibility for how I can teach my children, the children in the neighborhood schools where I live, in my community, my fellow church members. How can we reach out to other nations, those who are among us and those who are abroad? How can we share what we have? And so I encourage all of you, as you look to what you'll be doing with the civics education, with the curriculum for social sciences, help ignite that flame. Help motivate your educators to ignite that flame in the youth because truly they are the guardians of our future and the freedom of the world. President George Washington told us that our primary objective should be the education of our youth in the science of government. Now, that doesn't have to involve military service, but it certainly has to involve a patriotic feeling of we over a generation of me. In closing, I will say what I have said many times and I plan to say until the day I die. I strongly believe that we best honor those who have willingly given their lives for us by making something of honor out of the lives they have given to us. And that is exactly what we, as public educators, parents, and citizens of this great country, should do with every breath that God gives us. Thank you, and may God forever bless the United States of America. And that's why I asked her. So she is articulate and passionate, and she stirs the emotions that I have in my heart as well. Um, the flag leaning over here, or we've got set up over here, as well as if you get the opportunity to drive up into North Ogden. Tell me the canyon one more time. Coldwater, Coldwater Canyon. They have the massive flag that they carry up there and, and, and string from one side of the canyon to the other, and it is awesome. It is a very stirring sight to go see. Um, my father's in the military, my grandfather, my father-in-law. Sorry, she did so good. I was trying not to be emotional, but I, it is an honor to honor those that serve. And I hope we can remember this next week. And I actually want to close with a prayer. So. Our dear Father in heaven, we are grateful this day for this great nation. We are grateful for thy hand and all that takes place here. We're grateful for thy love and thy watchfulness. Help us as we look over the, as we watch over the families and the children in this state of Utah. Help us that we will know those things which will um, create liberty and freedom, uh, both of consciousness and mind. Help us that we may um, do those things that will strengthen our communities. Father, we pray for those at this time that are, that are healing or in need of healing from the atrocities that were committed in Mexico on families. Bless those that are suffering from injuries that they may be healed and they may be helped and their families may be able to receive the comfort they need. Father, we're grateful for the great staff here that work so hard to um, behind the scenes we're grateful for our great educators. We pray that that will bless all of them. This I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Board Member Earl, and a special thanks to uh, Jenny Taylor for uh, your sacrifice and and your contribution. Thank you. Um, next, we will have uh, Superintendent Dixon for employee recognition. Good morning, board members. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to introduce to you our November Employee of the Month, Karen Tolley. And I would imagine that um, 
you, most of you know, Karen, and if you don't, then you haven't attended Teacher of the Year Banquet or um, our wonderful Beverly Taylor Sorts and Arts celebration of our teachers who are honored every year. But anything classy that happens out of this office, Karen is somehow behind it. She's behind the scenes doing uh, a lot of the heavy lifting. And she is the one that displays our art along with Kathy Jensen each month. And Karen, um, I've known for a few years now, and I've just watched her be such a, a diligent and consistent and responsible worker. And she just goes about her work very quietly, but makes everything classy and lovely and um, always follows through with aplomb. So I just assumed that she'd been named Employee of the Month because she's so great. I said, how many times? And she said, this is my first time. We should have honored her long ago because she is so great. And so I'm so honored to be able to present her as our November Employee of the Month to you, Karen Tolley. And then we have a, a crop of wonderful new employees that have come to us, and so we'll have them come to the mic. I know you're really excited about this part. It's, uh, this, is, this is great induction, right? So uh, come to the mic, and if you would mind just giving us your name and um, what your new role is and where you're coming from. Hello, my name is Ashley Lauer, and I am a behavior specialist with the Safe and Healthy Schools team. And most recently, I was a school psychologist at, with Granite School District, and I am extremely excited to be here. Hi, my name is Clarissa Stebbing. I'm a prevention specialist, and I have spent the last 11 years working in prevention at Big Brothers Big Sisters of Utah. Hi, I'm Sabrina Gale. I'm uh, executive secretary up at Special Ed, and for the last four years, I was HR coordinator for Project Reality. Stephanie Ward. I'm an office specialist in special education. My most recent employment was uh, administrative work. I was always a temp. <laughs> Good morning, board members. I'm David Christensen. Uh, I'm a data analyst with the Safe and Healthy Schools Group, just recently hired. And uh, prior to that, for 17 years, I was uh, working for Gartner, an IT research and advisory group. Well, thank you for joining USBE. We'll have our uh, program specialist, uh, Karen Tolley, will help us with uh, our acknowledgement of the student artwork. Thank you. You get a double dose of me this morning. Um, Kathy Jensen is away today and has asked me to present the student artwork to you. We have two Beverly Taylor Sorensen Arts Learning Program schools represented this month. On the east wall from James Moss Elementary and Granite School District, we have first on the, the north end, uh, first grade line drawings. The first graders were learning the difference between lines and pattern and also learned that they can make lines using pattern. Now on the south end of the east wall, um, from the sixth graders who were learning about color uh, theory and radial design, and they've used that learning to create these beautiful circular um, paintings. On the west wall, we also have from Moss Elementary gumball machines. Uh, these are second graders who are learning how to mix colors, and they use uh, that to make different colors of gumballs to fill their gumball machine illustrations. And the visual art specialist from Moss Elementary is Kirsten Scheel. Also here on the west side of the wall, we have some Matisse's black cats. These students were learning about uh, the techniques that artist Henri Matisse used where he would paint a background and then use paper cutouts and ap apply over that background. And the teacher asked them if Matisse had a cat, what would that cat look like? And after they created them, she asked the question, uh, what do our brains see even if the form isn't perfect? A good question to ask. And that uh, specialist is Regina Stenberg, and she is with Riley Elementary 
in Salt Lake City School District. Also from Riley Elementary on the back wall, on the north wall here, um, are sandhill cranes in Utah wetlands. And these are fourth grade students who were learning about the importance <coughs> of wetlands and waterfowl and how having healthy uh, wetlands is an important part of maintaining a healthy ecosystem. So I hope you enjoy the artwork this month. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite um, Board Member Cannon on our education highlights. Do you want to? You're going to be a part of this, aren't you? Okay. Got to log in. Well, you're welcome to go to that podium down there and invite whoever you're going to invite. We have an, our education educational uh, specialist, Estrada. I think I saw her. Dr. Estrada, she, I thought I saw her. Oh, yep. okay. Well, I did. <laughs> yes. So I it, think she's part of this. So yes. Come on up. Um, and I'll introduce her, her okay. in just a second. Okay. Uh, it is my honor today to get to introduce you to something wonderful that's happening at Cottonwood High School that is within my uh, state board district. It is about the asset that uh, some of our bilingual students are to our community, our schools, and our parents. And I'll introduce you to Dr. Estelle Estrada from our staff, who will give you a little more information. So, uh, board members, I just, this is an amazing uh, privilege. This is an innovative partnership that's collaborative among uh, several organizations. Um, it's modeled after the uh, youth translator uh, program for um, medical translations with uh, not just bilingual students, but multilingual students. So, and they are our economic uh, future, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna have the uh, three partners come up, principal of Cottonwood, uh, Alex Goyler, she'll tell you a little bit about um, her role, and then Sarah Schaefer. And then the students will come up and talk about their actual experiences. Uh, we work with uh, Whitney Phillips in privacy issues and Granite School District related to securing uh, privacy relationships with high school students who were 22 students in the pilot project in nine different languages that um, actually were trained as professional translators uh, and then worked with um, the refugee uh, feeder pattern for Granite School District to do translations for parent-teacher conferences, um, which includes uh, three dialects of, um, of Arabic as well. And we also have uh, a vice chair that is gonna, uh, whenever she can, she's gonna mention something because these are her students as well. So could we have all of you come up? My name is Terry Roylance, and I am the proud principal of Cottonwood High School. Um, I, I have the honor to work with United Way as a full-time partnership with our school. Um, and Sarah Schaefer is our United Way rep that um, coordinates wonderful things in our building. And she comes to me with an idea, um, and, and I go with it. I trust Sarah, and this was, this was a great idea that she, with, with Alex Goler and other partnerships, have come up with and has been a great benefit for our, our students. So thank you. Hi, um, I'm Alex Goler with the Refugee Services Office. I'm a program specialist there. Um, and this, a lot of this came out of a thesis that I wrote for completion of my master's program last year. Um, and I'm really excited to hear from these kids. So I'm gonna let, leave most of the time to them. Hi, I'm Sarah Schaefer. I'm the United Way Community School Director at Cottonwood High School. I would love to take credit for this idea, um, but it was not my idea. I just helped with the logistics and implementation and it's a really, it's an honor to work with these students. They're really incredible, and it's one of the favorite parts of my job. Um, and I'm going to let them talk to you. We have four of our students here, um, and they are excited to share their experiences with you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Avinas, and I'm from Nepal. I speak three languages, and I came to U.S. in 2013 and I got my citizen, citizenship last week. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I came here, 
I, like, I didn't know any English, but I'm getting better every day. And I'm learning new things every day, of course. And this program has helped me to learn more because like when I hear, like, I hear more words when our, when t our teacher speaks and we every year we go to our elementary school to tra translate uh, twice a year yeah um. hello everyone good morning <laughs> my name is Miriam and uh, yeah, um, I speak two languages. I'm boring, I only speak two. <laughs> yeah, not like Avinashi speaks three or more. Yeah. So I speak Arabic and English. I am from Iraq. I, I was just born in Iraq, but then I lived my whole life in Jordan. And then I came here six years ago. That's when I found my passion about being a translator and interpreting and helping people. Doesn't matter how I help, I love helping. It's just in my blood, I think. <laughs> and then when Miss Cummins, I remember she's she's sitting with two guys right now. I remember she came up to me. She was like, do you guys want to translate for something? I was like, I would love to. I jumped out of my seat. I was like, me, me, me. And then she's like, okay, calm down. <laughs> We're doing it. And then she put my name on that paper. And then I was like, okay. I didn't think it would be actually, you know, noticed. But it actually became noticed. Yeah. And then... She came up to us the next day and she's like, there's a program, you guys wanna be in it? I was like, yeah, sure. And it was on my birthday that day that of a training. <laughs> it was on my birthday, I woke up at eight in the morning, I was crying, I didn't want to come up. <laughs> it was too early. But I still, I was like, no, it's worth it. Let me get up and do it. You might actually be wondering, what am I talking about? What is this program? The program is the youth interpreting it's one of the most wonderful programs that I've ever been in. It helps people. It gave, it gave me a passion. It, not that. It made me learn new things, not just about to, how, to, how to translate to people. It made me how to be communicative and talk to people. I feel like that's the reason that I would do it, and I will always do it. And I will encourage anyone to do it, anyone. Like, anyone. If it was any of my friends, I would be like, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Hamdi and I'm from Somali and the youth interpreting was amazing and I will do it again. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, hi, good morning. Uh, my name is A-Chan. Uh, I'm from Thailand. I speak Burmese and English. So when my family got to the U.S. in 2016, we have hard time learning English and understanding. But luckily, we have a coast worker who help us. And then I remember one my first day of high school. I was like so scared, nervous. I don't really speak the language. But this the student like, who speaks the same language, and then he came to me. He take me to counselor. So I was so grateful for what they did. So I was, I was just thinking that um, maybe I could, one day I could help them like that. If I could do them like what they did, it might be grateful. So I do in the high, uh, I do best my best in the school. So when I go to high school, I heard about the interpreter. So I draw with my friend, and then we go together. We do eight-hour training, and then we learn how to interpret, like how to help people. Then we go to the elementary school, and then we help together. I was so grateful for what uh, what we did, and I, I would like to do that again. So thank you for having us. So we're, that was the pilot project. We're actually upscaling it. We have five other districts that are interested in relationship to the training for uh, interpretation in multiple languages. Just so you know that this will be upscaled. And I think it might be interesting to hear from uh, Vice Chair Cummins. I have the honor of associating with these young kids every day. <laughs> they. Uh, 
these kids are in, in my class this year, one of them last year, and I have the honor of meeting with them. They truly are an asset to the community. Their language skills, their enthusiasm, they're all preparing for college and their next steps in their futures, and I'm excited for them and honored to be a part of their lives and to associate with them, so thank you. Um, okay, questions, uh, comments from board members? Uh, board member Scott Nielsen? Yeah, I, I am so, so very impressed with you young people. This, you are what, what, just to lighten your eyes, this is what America is all about. This is what you're all about. You're gonna, I'm just so impressed with you and the great leaders that, and the people that you're going to be and for what you're going to do for people in the community. So thank you for coming here today. Really, it's an honor. Um, I love language. I am currently the, uh, I'm in the 300th military intelligence as the language recruiting officer for the Utah National Guard. And it is amazing to see the power and the bridges that language does in our lives. And so I hope as a board that we can recognize that, especially as we look more into dual immersion and then into wonderful students like yourselves who can bridge the gaps and the divides that we may have through language. It's so powerful. So thank you for, thank you for being here and thank you for being such wonderful students. I'm, I, I'm so excited for you and your future. So thank you. The honor is all mine. Thank you. Um, board member uh, Cindy Davis. I was just, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were scrambling trying to find an interpreter in my district. And I'm thinking, students interpreting is brilliant. So kudos to you. And I think that you will fill a need that we are seeing more and more. And what a great service. Thank you. Thank you. So we actually had two parents come in from parents of the translators. So could we just have them come up and applaud for their, you know, commitment to the education of their children? Oh, so sister and mother. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so they're together. Okay. Family. Uh, and remember, this is a pilot project that's shaped on medical translation and training translators. Uh, we actually have a final report, I think, that we can give you so you can see the impact it actually had on parents. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, we have a, a, a okay. question or comment from board member Mark Marsh. Uh, first, I want to congratulate you for stepping up and taking an opportunity to serve other people who are in need. Uh, that's a great need at the time they get here and they don't speak, having fallen into interpretation and translation by default many times. Uh, I have run into opportunities to, to serve in that and to see what you're doing now at a young age is going to open so many doors for you to create yourself a living, that you could make a living off of this, uh, not only helping, but, but uh, being a part of that. I had a student from my high school who learned Russian, really loved it, uh, enjoyed it. He took it in college, got a degree in it in college, felt like there was really nowhere for him to go. Uh, a couple of years after he was out of college, got a phone call from his professor that worked closely with him in college and, and believed in him. He now works across the street from the White House uh, and is one of the top interpreters and people involved in public relations with the Russian country. Um, so just set your, set your goals fairly high. Don't worry about just helping people not only in your community, but look where you could do and serve our country. Thank you. Um, did you wanna, can you introduce? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my mom, Kalita, and uh, yeah, she, she's the biggest support. <laughs> and then this is my sister, which is some support. Well, she supports me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she, she supports. <clears throat> she supports enough to have me going through school. She was with me in high school last year. Me and her, we were always together. Yeah. But, you know, sisters, we have to fight. Yeah. And then my mom, which is 
She's the biggest support who you can ever get. She drives me to school every time <laughs> before before I got my license, but now I got my license, so I didn't need her. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Well, thank you. Any other questions or comments from? Oh yeah, and she says thank you very much. Oh, and you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Board Member Janet Cannon. I don't. There we go. First young man that spoke to us. You said you spoke three languages. But could you tell us what your languages are and maybe how you came to know each of them? Uh, so uh, I speak English, Nepali, and Hindi. Um, Nepali and Hindi, Hindi is the Indian language. So they're so similar. Like most of the words, they're like, seem like so similar. So I, I learned it from the movies. Like I watch it all the time. So, so yeah, that's how I learned it. I'm not seeing any other questions or comments. Um, did you have any more you wanted to add, Board Member Cannon, to this before we wrap this up? So thank you for being here, and thank you for the example and being part of this pilot program and enlightening not just the board but everyone here at USBE and those that are listening on of, of the great work that you're doing. And this is just the beginning. So thank you for coming. <laughs>